I was thinking the other day about the joy that came my way. He took away my frown and all things that had me found. I thought about all those times when I was walking around in the day. And an angel fell before you with nothing but grace. Oh, Lord. We praise you. Oh, Lord, we praise you. Hey. Amen. I'm going to sing this song. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled. He's been good oh, to me. Let's say it again. God has smiled. He has. My, 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 my God. Smile. He's been good. Oh, me. Listen. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. God had. In the morning, he has my mind. God, God has late at night. He's been good. He's been good. Lord knows he's been good. He stood by me this morning. Oh, he got me out of bed. Yeah, to me. Come on, say amen again. Give God a hand praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a good big hand praise. Amen. How many of you all know that God is worthy of all praise? I say he is worthy of all praise. Amen. We are excited about what, amen, what the Lord is doing here at Greater Rose of Sharon. Amen. Amen. We're going to ask our male chorus to come together as they get in place. They're going to bless us this morning with a, a song. Amen. Here we go. Emma.
awake? Will I lay awake and can sleep? I can see an angel at my feet. Heaven is looking down for me. says heaven is looking down on me. Heaven is looking down on me. His come on, y'all. Those of you that come to have a, a, a good time in the Lord, just raise your hand. Come on now. They come to have a good time in the in the, in the Lord, Amen. Right now, uh, uh, y'all put your hand together. Come on, give, give give your choir. Come on, let's give the choir a, a big hand. Give the choir a big hand. Listen, I I've, I've talked with uh, 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 a minister of music, and someone stopped me this morning. I was I was coming into the church and said, Pastor, will you please sing that old song? And I, I'm I'm gonna try to sing the old song, Amen. Y'all know it's a it's an old song. It's not one of these them that was wrote last week. Amen. It's, it's been around. Y'all, y'all go and sing the one. Go ahead and sing the one that was wrote last week. But amen. But let me go back. Amen. A few years ago, because this song means something to me. It, 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 I mean, you know, there's some song we sing. We might sing a lie. You understand? Me? But now this song here is not a lie because God is able. Anybody know He's able? I say anybody know He's able. A little song that goes, y'all read the choir. A little song that goes something like this. Well, God is able. God is able. Just to carry. It makes no difference. Of what the world may do. Well, you trust in Jesus. It's in everything. God is able just to carry you through. Well, God is able just to carry. It makes no difference what the world may do. Well, you trust in Jesus. In everything, but God is able to just to carry you through. Well, it ain't no secret of what the Lord can do, what He done for us, He'll do for you. Well, you trust in Jesus that everything that God is able is just to carry you through. Well, God is able or just to carry. It don't make no difference. What the world may do, well, 
Will you trust in Jesus? Trust in Jesus. You're better to get heavy to keep on trusting. Your way get dark to keep on trusting. In everything, to God is able. To God is able. The God is able. I know He's able. I know He's able. Anybody here ever try Him? I know He's able. You know He's able. You ought to weigh your hand. Well, he's able, he's able, he's able, the Lord is able, the Lord is able, woke me up early this morning, started me out on my way, gave me strength, yes he did. Gave me joy. Yes, he did. I tried him. I tried him. Anybody tried him? I tried him. He's able. He's able. Listen, he walked with me. He walked with me. He talked to me. Yes, he is. 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 Yeah, he's able. My way out of no way. And my bread when I'm home. My joy in the midnight hour. Say yeah. Say yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's able. He's able. He's able, he's able, he's able. God is, God is, God is, God is, is. just to carry you through. I had somebody up here that I would, if I had somebody. 
somebody do a Holy Ghost dance, I would do a Holy Ghost dance up here. Yeah! Thank you! Songwriter said, God is. Not Muhammad, but God is. Not off the blood, but God is. Not Rosa Sharon, but God is. Not Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but God is. Y'all get the picture, God is. All by himself. And he's able. If we just trust him. He's able. When life is on the top of the mountain, he's able. But then when life is in the valley, he's still able. Exceedingly. Abundantly. Above all, all you can ask from him, according to your power that worketh in you, you Cause he won't give up on you. He's able. He's able. Come on, everybody.
all time. Oh, 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 he's able, you say. Come on, take me out. We thank you for all of your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for the songs. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the praise that if men, women, boys, and girls are going to be saved, they must hear the word of God preached. So, Father, I pray now that you would hide me behind the shadow of Calvary's cross. Lord, we pray that your word fall on good ground on this day. And if there be a sin in the midst, we pray that they come running seeking salvation. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you, for you are worthy to be praised. It's in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ we pray and ask it all. Amen. 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 If you're excited about Jesus, come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. We give all thanks to God and to his son who is Jesus the Christ and to the Holy Spirit our comforter and our teacher and I'm sure that you would agree with, with me when I say that it's good to be here and uh, we want to thank Pastor Blood for this opportunity to stand to all of the other ministers deacons, mothers and all of you my brothers and sisters in Christ Amen. it's, it's a good day this is a day that we had not seen before, would never see again. <laughs> and for that, we ought to be thankful. Amen. There's a word this morning coming from the book of First Thessalonians. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18. And if you have it, would you let it be known by saying amen? amen. And it reads, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Amen. I want to ask the question this morning. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Let us all say amen. My brothers and sisters, we are living in what the Bible calls very perilous times. Whenever you turn on the television, there's more and more disturbing news. There were wildfires destroying entire neighborhoods on the West Coast. The flood in Louisiana was the worst natural disaster since Superstorm Sandy. There's still killing in the land. It appears to be open season on black men. And according to the Washington Post, there have been 708 people killed by police this year. And the year is not over. There are people taking to the streets to protest the violence and the injustice in the land. And there's so much taking place around the globe that is too much to even try to call it all. <coughs> and brothers and sisters, all of this is the summation. All of these events that we see taking place are indicators that Jesus is on his way back. <laughs> and since we can see these things happening with our own eyes, we see the Bible being fulfilled question was asked this morning, will you be ready? <coughs> because one day, brothers and sisters, only known to the Father, one day he's going to send the Son. Yes, sir. And according to the Bible, there is there's nothing else that needs to happen in order for God to allow the Son to return. And brothers and sisters, my daddy used to use a big word. He, he would say, it would behoove you. <laughs> it would behoove us to make sure that we are in the right place with God. Because one day, this life as we know it, is going to all be over. <laughs> now, let me, let me just speak to some of the things that are happening, current in events right now. Uh, we know that there is some hostility in our nation. We know that there is tension among the black race. We know that there are some who feel a certain way about policing uh, the, the authorities. Well, the right thing to do as Christians, yes, sir. even though we see some injustice taking place, there's some things that are just dead wrong that are happening. Yes. But as a child of God, we are to love everyone. That's right. The ones who are committing the crimes, the ones that are retaliating and, and taking law and taking matters into their own hands. Listen, we have to love and we have to forgive. Right. That's the right thing to do. Now, if you want to protest, if you want to you want to stand in the community and then let your voice be heard, fine. But as a child of God, 
even the officers who have committed murder, who have, who have gone beyond their authority, we've got to forgive them. <laughs> because if, if, if the Bible is right, and we believe that it is, Scripture plainly says <laughs> that if you want to be forgiven, then you must forgive. See, there are some things that are beyond our control. <laughs> and if we trust God to heal us when we're sick, <laughs> we trust God to provide us when our funds have run low, <laughs> then we can trust that God will take care of the situation in Tulsa, <laughs> the situation in Louisiana. <laughs> we can just trust that God, in some form or fashion, in some kind of way, God's going to work it out. <laughs> that was a good place for you to say amen. <laughs> now, in our text, Paul has been in Thessalonica for three Sabbaths, and he has preached and taught an amazing amount of doctrine concerning death and the resurrection and the last judgment. The church at Thessalonica had just been founded, and along with being a brand new church, they had to deal with persecution. Yeah, yeah. And one of the major issues that this church dealt with was there was concern over the death of loved ones. They eagerly waited for the appearing of Jesus Christ. But what about the, the loved ones who've already passed on? Now, keep in mind, Christianity was still in its infancy, and then here is a church that it's brand new. Yes, and these believers, they believed, as you and I did, that Jesus died and rose again on, on the third day, and they believed he was coming back again, but there was, there was some misunderstanding, misunderstanding. Yeah. about those who have already died. You see, they were waiting for Jesus, <laughs> and they had a very humble spirit about waiting on the Lord, yeah. so much so that uh, they didn't see it important to send the kids to school, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because Jesus is on the way. <laughs> they didn't spend so much time attending to the crops, <laughs> and we don't need to work in the field because Jesus is coming. <laughs> yeah, man. So they, they really didn't understand what it meant to Wait on the Lord. Talk, talk, <laughs> now, waiting on the Lord doesn't mean we stop doing what we're supposed to do every day. Amen. We still go to work. We still pay our bills. We, we still take care of the family. But waiting on the Lord really means that we do the Lord's work. <laughs> we work while we wait on him to return. <laughs> and since this was a young church, Paul wanted to teach them. He, he says, now listen, in verse 13, I would not I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, yes, concerning them which are asleep. Now notice Paul didn't even say they were dead. He said they were yeah, asleep. They were asleep. Yeah. And then he says that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. In other words, listen, you're not to fret and worry like one who there is no hope, like there's hopelessness. He says, listen, he said, listen. Don't, don't worry about these things. They're, they're, they're just asleep. Your loved ones who have passed on in the Lord, they may not be with us physically, but they are just sleeping. And Paul was teaching that their concern over death shouldn't lead them to worry what's going on with their loved ones because to be absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. Paul was letting them know that their loved ones yes, sir, are in good hands. Yeah. And brothers and sisters, listen, sometimes we get a little concerned. <laughs> sometimes we're concerned about the everyday goings and comings of life. Yes, sir. Sometimes we grieve mightily hard when a loved one passes away. <laughs> but brothers and sisters, let me just give it to you straight. If a person dies in sin, uh, yes, sir. if they die and they have not 
ever while they were living, accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. That's a sad funeral. But if we have a home-going ceremony for one who have given their life to the Lord and they've lived the best life they could and they, they did all they knew to do to please God and, and live a lifestyle pleasing unto the Lord when they pass on, yes, we're going to shed some tears of grief. Yes, we, we're going to have some, some good days and bad days, but you should rest assured knowing that if they died in the Lord, that all they did was transition from this life yeah. over to the next life. <laughs> yes, and that's a blessing. You, you, you do know that when we accepted Jesus Christ, we were given the gift yes, of eternal life. Yes, <laughs> it was a gift that was given. Yes, right, and it is we are able to cash in on the gift <laughs> when we take our last breath and leave this body. Listen, there is no waiting period. Oh, man. You're not going to hang around in purgatory. <laughs> uh, when, when you leave, when you take your last breath, we leave this place and we go home to be with the Father. <laughs> and Paul wanted this young church to understand that even though the believers that have passed on before us, listen, they didn't miss out on the gift. They are still in the presence of the Lord. But then Paul takes it a step further. He begins to explain that death was not the end. Not the, end. the hope for all believers is in the resurrection and in his return. Y'all yeah. do know that Jesus arose, didn't you? Yeah, he did. <laughs> and as the old folks would say on that great getting up day, it will, all, it will include all believers, even those who have passed on. Yeah. And when I began to look at this text, and many years ago, as I, the first time I began to look at this, this topic of the second coming, you know, Pastor Blood, in school, I must admit, as a student, I did not like lengthy reading assignments. And I had a tendency to go to the end of the book and read the last chapter <laughs> just to kind of get an idea of how the story ends. <laughs> yeah. So as I began to read the Bible, <laughs> one day I decided I would just go to the end of the book yeah. to kind of see how the end is going to, what the end is going to bring. <laughs> and when I read and found out that one day Jesus is going to come back, and according to the word of God, he's going to, He's going to come, he's going he's gonna to roll back the sky yeah. like a scroll. He, he, he's going to make a loud shout. Yeah. And according yeah. to Scripture, it says the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. Yeah. And those of us that remain alive right. will be caught up. Yeah. Reverend yeah. Campbell, I remember when being caught up was a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. But according to the Scripture, we will be caught up to meet, meet the Lord in the air. Yes, sir. So my question, brothers and sisters, will you be ready? <laughs> you see, we come to church and we, we sing and we listen to the prayers and we, we rejoice in the Lord. We hear the songs, but it has been mentioned through the Sunday school lesson uh -huh. and we talked about it today that, that sometimes you can come in the church sit on the biblical teaching, yes, be in the presence of the Lord and still be captive in your mind, still be on the Satan stronghold. And there are some that come in and out of the church that have never actually made a commitment to the church. As a matter of fact, there are some that are not really a part of the church. They are just externally attached to the church. They, they participate in what's going on in the church, but are not really members of the church. I have two dogs in my backyard, Caesar and Buck. And one day I was in the backyard brushing Caesar, and I just happened to notice there was a tick on Caesar. Now, when I looked, that the tick was on the dog, yeah, but the tick is not really part of the dog. <laughs> so I, I had to take some tweezers and get the tick off the dog, because the dog was the tick was not a part of the dog. And now there are some that come to the church 
that hang around the church that, that are not really a part of the church. And when Jesus comes, he's coming for the true church. And there are those that come to church that are not a part of the church. So when Christ comes to receive the church, there are some that are going to be left behind. We have to make sure that we're ready. Now this doctrine of the resurrection and the second coming of Christ, this is a great antidote against the fear of death and sorrow in the loss of loved ones. You see, this doctrine gives us full assurance that if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, then we will rise again with him. And let's not take it for granted that everyone understands this. That's right. You see, some folks wonder, even though they believe in the Lord, That's right. and even though they, they want to do all they can to live a lifestyle pleasing unto God, but when it comes to that last hour, now no matter how faithful we are and have been, when it come down to death, we are more, we are more interested in life than death. <laughs> yeah, we're paying for life insurance, but we're, we're not in a hurry to leave here. <laughs> but, but as believers, we know that one day, either we're going to pass away or Christ is coming. So we need to be prepared spiritually. As Pastor Blood would say, one day we got to get out of here. <laughs> and we need to be ready. And Paul was letting the, those believers in Thessalonica know that listen, your loved ones who have passed on, they are just asleep. They are with the Lord. Yes, sir. Notice what he says in verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which, is, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you. By the word of the Lord. Matter of fact, let me pause right there. Pastor said something in Sunday school this morning. He said that for, for some of us, listen, God's word is, is our only solution. It's our only salvation. It's the only promise we have just standing on God's word. Yes, because we're living in the world and people are making promises and we're trying to depend on this, depend on that. Listen, the only thing that's solid is God's word. And then Paul says it in this for, uh, in the 15th verse. He says, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, there's nothing that's going to take place that's going to prevent those that sleep in the Lord from being rise, raised when he comes. And then the thing that we should get excited about, brothers and sisters, in the intro I mentioned about the police shootings. We talked about the destruction in the land with wildfires. We talked about the floods. So these things, if you study your Bible, these things will intensify before they get better. So since Pastor has taught us that the only thing we can stand on is God's word, is it's time for us to start thinking beyond this life. And start to rejoice now because one day all of these pains and troubles, and they will be over. Because one day God's going to come back to receive us. <laughs> Y'all ought to be a little more excited about that. <laughs> yeah, see, sometimes we, we get happy when we get an abundance of money. We get happy when, when our body's healed. But let me share something with you. Listen, if whatever your health condition is, and I know God's a healer. And if he yeah. touched your body right now and your health did a total 180, you hadn't been able to walk, now you're able to run. Your, your blood pressure goes down. Diabetes goes away. Your finances turn around. You used to be broke. Now you got money. And all of your problems turn around. You still got to leave here. If everything changes, if the, if the police stop killing people, if, if there's no more natural disasters, even if all of these problems end, we still must get ready for heaven. 
Folks, praise God in the Bible when God raised Lazarus from the grave, but eventually he did die. Yeah. Yes, sir. He did die, Reverend. No doubt. Yeah. And no matter what we are praying about and what we're praying for and what we're praying through, even if God allows it to come to pass in this life, we still must prepare our soul to leave this earth. And Paul says, Paul says for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself yeah. shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard not to get excited when yeah. you think of this. It, 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 it says that, that he will ascend with a shout. You see, when he called Lazarus from the grave, if I'm not mistaken, the text says he shouted with a loud voice. And the same loud voice is going to shout from the heaven. Because he's speaking with the voice of authority. Because when he raised Lazarus from the grave, he said, Lazarus, come forth. Now, because he had the voice of authority, if he would have just said, come forth, then everybody would have got out of the grave. <laughs> but he called Lazarus by name. Because he has the voice of authority. So when he comes the second time, he will descend with a shout. And according to the word of God, he says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the loved ones that the folks in the church at Thessalonica were concerned about, Paul is teaching them that when Christ comes and he calls with a loud shout, with the trump of God, those folks that you were worried about, they're going to rise first. But then, but then it gets even better because it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. Now, listen, this, listen, this takes some you got to really try to expand your thinking to, to, to grasp this. This means that what Paul is saying, that every believer that has died will rise first. And then all of us that are alive, we will be caught up with them in the air. So picture, if you will, millions and billions and trillions of people Levitating between heaven and the earth. <laughs> we will not be in this physical body. Why would the Lord raise us and call us up with bodies that have diabetes? <laughs> with bodies with high blood pressure. <laughs> with bodies with muscular dystrophy. <laughs> so when we are caught up we will have received our glorified bodies. <laughs> Won't have to worry about a high A1C. <laughs> Won't have to worry about thyroid problems. <laughs> Won't be no more mental anxiety. <laughs> Won't be no more stress problems. <laughs> because we will be caught up. Notice what it says in the text. Then we shall be, we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds yes, to meet the Lord in the air. Now here's where you ought to get happy. It says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, so brothers and sisters, I need to ask you again. Will you be ready? See, there's going to come a day where 
God's going to call us home to be with him. So just in case you're not ready, this same Paul talked to the church at Rome. For those that aren't quite ready and need to know what to do to get ready, Paul said in the 10th chapter of Romans, round about verse number 9, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and God raised him from the grave, the Bible says, thou shalt be saved. And see, this is not something to play with. Some folks think we got time. See, young people, young people, because we're young, we think we just got plenty of time to get it right. But the truth of the matter is, no man knows the day nor the hour when Christ will return. There have been some men who have tried to predict when Jesus will come back again. But the truth of the matter is, nobody knows when the Lord will come. Matter of fact, the truth of the matter is, my watch got about 11.30. Christ could come before 11.31. So you need to make sure that you're ready. He says, this is the day when all humanity will know that Jesus Christ is Lord. This is the day that the atheists will find out that they had it wrong all along. This is the day that false teaching will be put to shame. This is the day when every eye will see him in his full glory. So if you're not ready, it would be a good thing for you to get ready. <laughs> it's time to surrender your life to Christ. It's time to quit living life according to your own terms. It's time to quit living like we don't have a day that's coming where we're going to have to give an account for this life. Christ came. He died and rose again. He gave his life on a cross. He rose again on the third day with all power in his hands. And we know that to be the good news. But if you really want to celebrate, if you can celebrate his first coming, just know we ought to be getting excited for the second coming. One day there'll be no more violence in the land. We won't have to worry about pain and problems. There's coming a day where he'll turn tragedy into triumph. There's coming a day where he'll turn pain into praise. There's coming a day where he'll turn death into victory. And we ought to celebrate Jesus because one day life as we know it, one day it's all going to be over. So will you be ready? Will you be ready when he calls? Will you be ready when he comes? Are you going to be ready when it's time to meet him in the air? There's going to be a day where we're going to have to leave this earth. We're going to leave these problems and leave all these trials and concerns. One day he's coming back again. As I get ready to go to my seat, when I was growing up in the East End, there was a game we used to play out in the playground and in the backyard called hide and go seek. Somebody would stand on the tree and they would begin to count. They'd say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight nine and ten and then they would say ready or not here i come and that's what the lord is telling the church ready or not here i come so you better get ready because one day he's coming and he's coming back for the church john said in the 22nd chapter of the revelation come lord jesus come so one day he's coming will you be ready when the Lord returns.
yeah, yeah, yeah. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? Yes, sir. Yeah. Scripture says he's coming back. And Cross just got through saying we're going to meet him in the middle of the air. He's not coming back to touch the ground. Sin is still down here. But he said, I'll tell you what, I'm not coming back and get nasty and get contaminated. But I'm going to meet you in the middle of the air. One day, one day, I'm coming back. Let us stand all over the building. And if you don't know him, today is a good day to know him. If you are not saved, you need to know that hell is real. Hell is real. Today is your day. Why don't you come now? <laughs>